Um, in recent years, they are having amazing breakthroughs in the state of artificial intelligence. The computer is now outmatches human in the game of Go and is about to drive cars with full autonomy. And computer vision is one of the most intriguing advances that are changing our lives. Hello, I am Yongjin Cho, and today I'd like to talk about how far computer has come in the field of object detection and how we can use computer vision to make self-flying drones. Yeah, thank you, Jonathan. Um, so, I will do my best to interact with you guys, and so please don't get frustrated. Um, yeah, so, first, next please. First, let me ask you something. How did you learn to recognize that this is an, this is an apple? Well, we don't obviously need super high intelligence or inborn talents. We just know it's an apple. But specifically speaking, we know that it's an apple not only because parents, our parents told so, but also because we have experienced some features of apples like texture, um, texture, color, and flavor, uh, f flavor and what like that. And once we know that this, that this kind of thing is called apple, we don't have to spend a lot of time to know other similar objects with different colors and different colors and sizes are also called apple. And this is how, and, and this is the mechanism of how we understand the world. So here's my second question. Can computer, can computer learn to perceive objects in such a way we do? For decades, for decades, scientists have searching for, searching for ways to gain machinery intelligence so machines can act and think as humans do. And they came out with an ingenious method. And this ingenious method called, is called the artificial neural network. The artificial neural network is basically a computational model which works similar to biological neurons. Um, and when information, when information flows through the neural network, it senses them and learns by adjusting the network to generate a good solution. But before using a neural network, we have to tune and train it in a way that it can make a good decision. For this purpose, we use testing data, which, in, which, cons which consists of inputs and corresponding, uh, corresponding expected outputs. And this, training pro and, and, this, and this training process is aimed to discover complex relationships and patterns in the data, in the data set and apply its prior knowledge to unknown data. So going back to the second question, can the computer learn to recognize things like we do? Thanks to the advances in artificial neural, artificial neural network, computer is obtaining an, an ability to perceive the objects and classify them. And we call this computer vision. In the early stage of computer vision, it took a few years with much effort to get the computer to differentiate, image, to, to differentiate images of dogs and those from, uh, from those of cats, which seems pretty simple for us. But nowadays, com nowadays, computer is far superior to human in the, in the domain of, of image classification. So from now on, I'm going to show you how much computer vision has developed. This is an open source neural network framework called DarkNet. And here, is, and here we have an image of dog. Will the, computer, will the computer accurately determine whether this is a dog or a cat? So let's figure out. Please. Well, um, I, I only wanted to show you in real time, but well, I couldn't help recording this because HDMI connection here is so bad. Here is so bad. <laughs> when we're in the detector, when we're in the classifier, here, I enter this image, and we can, and we got, oh, could you, could you, could you stop that image? The, the output, the output image, first. yeah, yeah, it's just, and we, 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 we got not only a prediction of a dog or a cat, but also read predictions. 
And this prediction is 100% correct. Please. And this dog here is actually Alaska Malgut. What's more, this prediction was done in only one second, which is faster than any other person in the world. So at this point, some of, may some of you may wonder uh, if computer can recognize objects other than dogs in this image. This is the problem of object detection. So I brought this image again, and, and let's see what the computer will tell about multiple images here. So I ran this detector already because it took about 25 seconds for detection on my computer CPU. So, um, so the computer says the computer says there is a bicycle with 99 uh, with 99 percent uh, with 99 percent probability and a truck with 92 percent probability and dog with a 100 percent probability and this is very very precise and. It can also perform object detection in a much more uh, in a much more granular level. So, so let's look at this image. It seems that we need a, we need a way more elaborate object detection system to know what kind of objects are in this image. So when running the, when so when so when running the detector. We could we could know the computer detects what are humans and what are persons, or what are people, um, with a pinpoint accuracy. And here is uh, and 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 the, the and the, inter the, the interesting part here is that it can also perform object detection in real time on my laptop. And this is a and this is a real time object de object detector which I built with which I which I developed with Python and TensorFlow. And I trained it on eighty different classes. In Microsoft Cocoa dataset, which include dogs, humans, lions, giraffes, and whatnot. So let's turn the video. So when I run this this real time object detector, please proceed. Yes. See, um, it tricks me as I move around the frame. And it's solely to a wide variety of changes like in size, pose, forward, and backward. Great. And, and let's see what other interesting things it can do. Can we turn to the next, to the second video? Yes, and when I turn around this object detector a little bit, it could, it could find people out in the audience. I, I really wanted to show this to show this to you guys in real time, but I couldn't. Uh, but I couldn't help in um, recording this, so please understand it. So let's get back to the, our switch. So this is how the computer how the computer perceives and uh, perceives and understands the world, and this is also exactly what we really need when we want to build a system on top of the computer vision, say, self-driving car. And it's really important to remember that um, this is a general purpose object detection system, so it can, uh, so we can, so we can train it for any image domain. So in other words, the same code we use to find stop signs, pedestrians, or bicycles for a self-driving car can also be used to find cancer cells in, in, in a tissue biopsy. And now I, I'm working on a self-strength drone. I already built a 3D printed prototype, which looks like this. And I uh, and and in my computer vision model, actually, uh, my, my my computer vision model gives the gives this drone the ability to see. And I think we if we can make a fully autonomous drone which decides where to fly, when to fly, and how to fly by itself. We can make our society we can, we can make our society way better. Imagine an autonomous drone flying around the wildlife habitats during the night, catching poachers, trying to trespass on trying to trespass on the animals' home, and reporting to human human rangers in real time for animals' protection. We can definitely save a number of endangered animals from uh, more effectively than before. 
it is really fascinating to see how many possibilities are created by you know, computer vision in our era. From real-time object detection to, uh, to, to animal, animal protecting self-flying drones, we can empower ourselves to do great things by taking advantage of this high-end technology. And I believe if we have more places for cooperation and idea exchange like today, we will achieve, we will achieve more amazing things together. Thank you.